dear students today we will discuss on the topic speed control of induction motor how to control the speed of the induction motor in the previous class we have discussed on the braking methods of induction motor that is when the motor is running to stop the induction motor what are the methods in that we have discussed on the different types of braking techniques and we have made comparison between each of the braking methods when to use which braking method like regenerative braking plugging and dynamic braking we have also seen the slip equation in each case of braking method and the torque speed characteristics of induction motor so from motoring to braking operation if the operating point is to be transferred then how does the characteristics change what are the speed torque characteristics we have observed then we have also solved a problem related to calculation of braking torque and current of induction motor with regenerative braking plugging and dynamic braking methods today uh, we'll see on speed control of induction motor so that by the end of this session uh, the student should be able to solve the problem to determine current voltage and torque of induction motor with stator voltage speed control the different types of speed control methods of induction motor are pole changing method stator voltage control supply frequency control rotor resistance control slip power recovery control so we'll try to discuss these uh, five types of uh, speed control of induction motor so first one the uh, pole changing method okay if you see the uh, equation for speed of the rotor n is equal to 1 minus s into ns rotor speed n is given by what synchronous speed minus slip speed so synchronous speed is ns and slip speed is s into ns so that you will get the uh, rotor speed n or nr is equal to 1 minus s into ns and the synchronous speed ns is given by 120 into f by p so that the total speed equation will be like this and you can see that the rotor speed depends on number of poles if the number of poles are increased then the speed will decrease okay then the speed will decrease so that's, that's what the understanding we get from equation one and then if we can design the motor where the change of poles is possible then we can have different speeds so by changing the, the uh, by changing the state or poles the speed of the induction motor can be changed so again in this uh, there are uh, three techniques that we can uh, obtain this change in poles one is multiple state or windings method of consequent poles and pole amplitude modulation okay we'll discuss uh, briefly with these techniques the pole changing method of speed control is suitable for squirrel case induction motor so this method of speed control can be used for uh, squirrel cage induction motor because the property of the uh, squirrel cage rotor is that based on the number of poles that are there in the stator automatically the rotor will also develop same number of poles there is no need to make any arrangements at the rotor side that simplifies the speed control method so this becomes the stator side speed control method so in this pole changing method if uh, we try to understand the concept of how it is done let us say we have two coils uh, one and three they are connected between the terminals a and b in this fashion so that if the current flows from a to b through these coils one and three they act as south poles okay, based on the direction of the flux similarly if you have two more uh, coils three uh, sorry two and four and they are connected such that between c and d such that the current flows from d to c okay d to c then uh, they act as north pole now we can have this arrangement of the coils placed in the stator winding such that alternately we get north south north south or south north south north like that so the simplified coil diagrams is shown here so between a and b we have coils 1 and 3 between c and d we have coils 2 and 4 like this 
So we can have series connection of these such that these two will produce south poles and these two will produce north pole. And in physical arrangement, it will be like a coil one. Okay, next coil two will be there. Okay, next this coil one will go to coil three. And this coil two will go to coil four. So like that, it will be there in the practical arrangement. Like this. So this is A, B, and this is C and D like this. So that now uh, the current flows. Uh, if these are connected in a, a series between B and D, if we have the connection between B and D, we have the connection. The same winding I have shown in this fashion, that's all. So between B and D, it is shown. Now the current flows from A to B. So these two will act as south poles. And uh, here the current is flowing from D to C and then D to act as north pole based on the current reference directions here. So similarly, we can connect it. That means now it is a stator winding with the four poles. Stator winding with four poles. So coming to this, uh, uh, we can also make these uh, uh, windings or coils to be connected in parallel so that A and B, these two, coil 1 and 3, act as south poles. And uh, between C and D, we have, uh, sorry, this is 1 and 3. This is 2 and 4. These two act as north poles. So now we can also connect in parallel. So based on the voltage and current ratings of the state or uh, winding, we can have series or parallel connection. So this we can get as four pole winding. Now, if for example, I connect these coils such that current flows from B to A, instead of from A to B, B to A, then these two coil one and three will also become north pole. And coil between uh, the coils two and four, if the current flows from D to C as before, they are still north poles. So totally we get four north poles. All these coils are uh, physically placed adjacent. If all these act as north poles, okay. If all these act as north poles, then the space in between will act as south pole. So if we are provided with uh, interfield uh, winding uh, or interpoles, then they those interpoles will act as south pole. So with that, what we get totally? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can assume the closed path. Uh, then we the motor will act uh, with 8 poles. Okay. So we can have the motor with 8 poles. Okay. 8 poles. Or we can have the motor with 4 poles. So based on this, uh, we can uh, <coughs> uh, we can get uh, different speeds because we are changing the number of poles. So this method of uh, uh, making the interpoles or the space between the main field windings uh, to be acting as a pole is called as a consequent pole. Yeah. So the other method, see here, multiple state or windings is the one method where we can connect them in series or parallel. And if, for example, we have three phase induction motor, then each phase A, B, C, can be provided with the possibility of uh, varying the number of poles. If, for example, the motor is designed for four poles, then I can have four poles or eight poles, four poles or eight poles, four poles or eight poles in each phase. Like that. Yeah. So next one is the pole amplitude uh, modulation. So instead of uh, providing the constant uh, or the sinusoidal uh, supply, now the field winding is provided uh, with variable voltage or a DC voltage like this, so that, yeah, so this type of voltage is applied and by this we can now uh, vary the effective number of poles and that is fractional poles you will get and hence you will get the fine or uh, smooth variation of the speed. So instead of only two possible speed, if I want to have a smooth variation of speed or a range of uh, control, then we can go with the pole amplitude modulation. Uh, okay. This type of pole changing method is normally not employed because this requires a special uh, design. Okay, This requires a special design in the motor and uh, the efficiency or it becomes very costly. So therefore, pole changing method is uh, used if it is very much essential or necessary. So the second uh, type of uh, speed control of induction motor uh, is uh, the uh, is the state or voltage control. Okay. Uh, 
spectrum. Yeah. So uh, it is the stator control, stator voltage control. Uh, if you see the torque speed characteristics of induction motor, uh, the torque I have taken here like this, and the speed on this side, so that the torque speed characteristics will be like this. If we take torque here and speed uh, speed here, then you'll get starting torque, then the operating region like this, and this is your synchronous speed. So this is the zero speed or starting speed. This is starting torque. So what is the observation here is for normal operation of the motor, the upper characteristics is there, let us say, that is full voltage is applied. If you have the possibility of uh, controlling the input voltage or the stator voltage, and if I gradually reduce the voltage, the operating characteristics comes down so that the T max availability of that, that voltage decreases. We can also observe that as the voltage is decreasing, the torque will also decrease, the starting torque, everything will decrease. This can also be justified with an uh, equation. We know that the torque, developed torque in induction motor is given by Ks into E square R2 divided by R2 square plus S square into X2 square. So uh, that is uh, the torque depends on the voltage, Okay, where E2 is the induced emf voltage at the standstill we can also write the torque equation in terms of the stator voltage so like uh, 3 by omega ms into uh, v phase square into r2 dash by s divided by square root of uh, rs plus rr dash by s whole square sorry this is not the, plus Xs plus XR dash whole square. So the torque equation depends on the square of the applied voltage. T is proportional to applied voltage square. Okay. So therefore, uh, this applied voltage is uh, responsible for the induced voltage in the rotor. So K is proportional to E square. So as the rotor, uh, as the stator voltage is changed, the torque is decreasing by square and hence the, there is a drop here. If for example, we have a fan load, the fan load characteristics will be like this. Normally, fan load will have the torque proportional to omega square like this. So with that, if for example, full voltage, the operating point is here. Now, reducing the voltage to V2, the operating point shifts here. So that I can now control the voltage. Uh, I can control the speed by controlling the voltage. So variation in the applied voltage can be obtained by connecting AC voltage controllers uh, or thyristor based voltage controllers, which consists of anti-parallel SCRs like this. By varying the firing angle alpha uh, or by delaying the uh, turn on of these SCRs, uh, we can uh, control the up voltage applied to the induction motor. The stator voltage can be controlled. So if uh, alpha is increased, if alpha is increased, applied voltage is decreasing and hence speed will also decrease because torque decreases and then speed decreases. <clears throat> the main disadvantage of this method is when we operate with uh, high value of uh, delay angle, there is uh, the drop in the power factor, power factor reduces. So we know that uh, power factor is given by uh, real power by total complex power and uh, this uh, real power is nothing but uh, what uh, v into that is nothing but vrms into i1 into cos phi1 fundamental component uh, divided by this s is nothing but vrms into irms so this vrms will cancel out so you have here i1 divided by irms uh, into cos uh, phi1 so this uh, I1 divided by IRMS is called as the distortion factor uh, and this cos phi1 is called as the displacement factor, okay, displacement factor. So by increasing the delay angle, the fundamental component decreases, distortion factor uh, decreases and uh, the displacement factor will also decrease. Uh, uh, therefore, the total power factor will reduce. So coming uh, to this uh, method, uh, supply frequency control. 
supply frequency control the rotor speed of an induction motor is given by n is equal to 1 minus s into ns and we know that this ns is 120 into f by p so if i substitute this i get a rotor speed as 1 minus s into uh, 120 f by p so if frequency is varied speed will also vary by increasing the frequency speed will increase by decreasing the frequency speed will decrease n is uh, proportional to f so this is one of the method where if you have the uh, supply voltage uh, variable frequency control then accordingly i can change the speed so there is a possibility observed here that by increasing the frequency the speed is increasing but because of the increase in the frequency of the supply voltage and hence the flux the motor uh, stator and the rotor core gets saturated so we have to take care that the uh, motor core does not get saturated we'll see in detail about how to go with supply frequency control where uh, to avoid this saturation we go with what is called as v by f control constant v by f control so if i increase frequency i will decrease voltage so that v by f ratio is maintained constant at the rated value so that is the method that is used then the fourth type of speed control is the rotor resistance control in this this method can be used for a slipping type of induction motor external resistance can be connected and by varying the external resistance the current and hence the torque will change so uh, it is observed that by varying the external resistance t max will remain same we have seen these characteristics already so if for example the normal operation is like this normal operation is like this by increasing the resistance the starting torque will increase maximum torque remains the same but yeah increasing the t max is there but slip increases the performance decreases sir. so this is because the i square r losses in the rotor circuit increase or in other words we can say that the slip power increases so there are losses uh, in the rotor circuit because of inclusion of external resistance and that is converted into a form of heat. So the fifth one, last one is to overcome the disadvantages of the previous rotor, uh, um, uh, rotor resistance speed control. Now this method is called as a slip power frequency control. So what is happening is there are I square losses in the rotor resistance speed control method. To overcome this, you can now inject this slip power inject this slip power through an external circuit uh, through an external circuit so uh, this three phase supply is used to operate the motor you will also take uh, the uh, voltage now this ac is converted into uh, dc and then dc to ac so with that what happens whatever the power that this induction motor requires that can be taken and supplied here or you can recover that uh, slip power and supply to the grid. So <clears throat> the principle of slip energy recovery is to connect an external source of EMF of slip frequency. So you can control the frequency by varying this uh, or by operating this inverter uh, to the rotor circuit. Okay, this circuit element is shown here. So this uh, method uh, reduces the heat loss in the induction motor and whatever the slip power that is required is not taken from the supply, but you are directly injecting into the rotor. So uh, you can go through this problem. Uh, I will have shared the material in the course web. Uh, here, the method is given for stator voltage control. First, it is asked to calculate motor terminal voltage, current and torque at a normal uh, uh, operation with uh, 1200 RPM. Okay. Now, if uh, for example, uh, I change the voltage to 300 volts. Then what happens to the speed, current, and torque? So the basic equation is this one. Uh, torque equation is this. Initially, we have to uh, find the motor terminal voltage. So the motor torque equation is this. And we know that for a fan load, uh, the load torque is proportional to omega square or k into 1 minus s whole square. So by this, uh, we can find the torque equation, load torque equation in terms of uh, slip and this uh, uh, should be equal to the motor torque under uh, steady state conditions. With that, uh, we can calculate the voltage, current and all. Okay. Please go through this problem. 
so dear students we have come to the end of the session we have discussed the different types of speed control of induction motor and uh, also seen the problem related to uh, calculation of current speed and voltage of and the torque of induction motor with the stator voltage speed control we can solve this problem similar to the lines whatever that is shared before we can solve one if there are any doubts you can contact for further understanding please refer sections 6.8 6.9 6.11 6.1 11.1 and solve problem 6.8 and try to solve the numerical problems exercise problem in the textbook gkdb 6.36 and 6.37 thank you students